So, good morning, everyone. How cool is it to be able to say that, eh? <laughs> i got to say, if, I'm not sure if you're aware, but 30 weeks it has been since anyone's met in the building here for church. So, what a wonderful uh, um, thing it is to be able to gather again um, in this way. Albeit, uh, we've got the limited numbers that we're allowed to have and we, uh, we are streaming live now as well, so... Um, welcome to everyone online as well who are watching uh, this service and joining in this service with us as well. It's great to have you as well. So yeah, very different, very different to what we are uh, used to, tr traditionally used to. Very exciting as well because it opens the door for a number of different um, uh, ministries as well uh, as we are able to share what we do here. Uh, right across the world, really, because I know that there are people from other countries that watch uh, and join in with our service. So isn't that a wonderful thing, the witness of the saints? Um, please let me uh, start by opening in prayer. Dear Lord, we just uh, thank you for the privilege we have to be able to come together in your name. Lord, we thank you for um, how even over the last 30 weeks, Lord, we have been able to, to still meet together and just in a different format, Lord. But Lord, how wonderful it is to be able to join together physically and to be able to, to, to lift your name together in a corporate way such as this. Lord, we just ask that you would bless this service. We just ask that your Holy Spirit would, would be here, Lord, and would touch each of our hearts and our minds as we worship you, Lord, as we, as we pray to you, Lord, and as we listen to your word um, and listen to the sermon that you have, you have for us today. Lord, we just uh, bring this service and, and lay it into your hands and ask that you would be glorified in all that we do. In Jesus' beautiful name, amen. So we're going to have our, um, our first worship item, and we'll call it a worship item uh, because we, we, at this point with the restrictions that we have, we're allowed to listen to our singer and join, um, join uh, in um, inside of us just not outside of us. So uh, try not to, uh, as difficult as it may be, to hold back that, that joy of singing. Um, please listen as our worship team bring to us uh, Live for the Kingdom. Thank you. Tribute to 
Thanks, Trudy and band. Uh, I'll get uh, Andrew McIntyre to come up and give us the announcements. Thank you, Andrew. And it's really worth doing because sometimes if I'm having not a great day or only 75% of my children are complying with something, usually a passage will come up that speaks into that situation. And this morning when I was thinking about the announcements, I was going, or I am, going to ask that we all bear with one another because these are really difficult times and we are doing our best to get back together under the current, uh, current restrictions that are in place in our society. And uh, so we really do ask for your patience and we really do ask that you bear with us. And, and the passage that came up today uh, was from Romans chapter 15 and verse 5 and it says, May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. And I thought that was quite appropriate for today being the first day uh, back uh, in a fashion. And uh, so uh, do bear with us encourage one another as best we can during these, these times. So a special welcome to you all that are here and a special welcome also to those joining us online as well. It's wonderful that you can participate in this way. So announcements. Welcome back as I said. Today obviously it's, it's the first bit back but we, we do, do ask that you do observe social distancing um, particularly when you do leave the building today. Um, keep that 1.5 metres apart from one another and Particularly, we ask when you've, it's okay to stay in your seats and talk for a little bit afterwards, as long as you stay on your, your dot. Uh, but uh, once, you, once you're heading out that door, we ask that you, you then disperse. Um, and it's predominantly, it's to comply with, with those uh, restrictions that are in place and also to set an example uh, to our community as well, uh, because there, there is obviously a lot of concern within our community uh, regarding COVID-19. If you need to go to the toilet, and I hope you don't, but if you do, go around the back of the hall there and into the back door and use the toilets there if you need to use that through, during the service uh, just to stay uh, out of the children's area there. When church concludes, I could ask parents if they could pick up, if you have children in kids' church, to pick them up quickly and then, then move on. We will, uh, there are a few of us uh, that are getting together down at Bushman's Dam with a I don't know what I'm having, but we're getting food down the street and, and going down there, and you're more than welcome to join us there. We can have groups of 20, so we can start a little clan system down there, and uh, so we'd love to see many of you, uh, many of you uh, there as possible. Uh, 
so just while I mentioned Kids Church before, if you're uh, interested or able to uh, help on the Kids Church roster, Tanya would love to hear from you. There is, uh, if you're picking up your children, there is a, a register form down there. Otherwise, if you could let Tanya know, I know she'd really appreciate that. Also, uh, for ladies, uh, there is a conference on next week and that's going to be online. And the, the, uh, to get a ticket to that, it has closed, but we know people who know people. And if you would like to talk to Belinda Fredericks, she might be able to help you get a ticket to that. Uh, it's on uh, guilt, grace and God. And uh, the person who will be delivering those talks is Greta Gort. And they'll be, they'll be running two people's home on Saturday next week and on Sunday. So it's, you go to one or the other. Uh, so if Saturday suits you better or Sunday, I think it's one to three or four or something. Something like that. We'll find out. But anyway, if you want to know more about that, ask Belinda, Belinda Fredericks. So those are all the announcements I have. Uh, we won't be taking it. Normally we take up the offering now. We won't be doing that. There is a retiring offering box there just at the door as you leave. So if you'd like to put your tithes there, um, that would be very much appreciated. I'm now going to do the Bible reading. So if you'd like to turn to your Bibles to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 11, or it's in the handout that for those that are here with us would have received as we walked in this morning. But for those at home, 1 Timothy 6, starting in verse 11. But as for you, O man of God, flee these things, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness, fight the good fight of the faith, take hold of the eternal life, to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you in the presence of God, who gives life to all things and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, to keep the commandment unstained and free from reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will display at the proper time. He who is blessed and only sovereign the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honour and eternal dominion. Amen. As for the rich at this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. They are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for themselves as a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of which is truly life. O Timothy, guard the deposit entrusted to you. Avoid the irreverent babble and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. For by professing it, some have swerved from the faith. Grace be with you. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Please uh, now join with me in a time of corporate prayer. Please uh, bow your heads. Our Father in heaven, we bring you all praise and glory and honour to you and you alone. You alone are the almighty God, the cre creator and sustainer of all things. Lord, we bring thanks to you that you are a God who forgives us our sins. Oh, we have fallen short in so many ways, Lord, sinning against you and only you. We, Lord, we thank you for the forgiveness that we receive through the shedding of your son Jesus' blood on the cross. Lord, we see in this world that there are many people who do not look to you for wisdom but instead go their own way. They do what suits themselves best and end up making decisions that are contrary, Lord, to your will for them. Lord, we just ask that you would speak into this, Lord. Lord, that you would stay the hand of the wicked. The enemy seeks to work evil against your people, against your church. So we ask, Lord, that your goodness would prevail over all that is evil in this world and that you would strengthen us to stand our ground and to endure the battle. Lord, we think of our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world. 
Lord, we bring them before you and we ask that you would continue to give them the courage to stand and to stand strong. Lord, that you would protect their families, that you would be with them. Lord, that you would give them uh, the words to speak and that they would continue to lift your name high. Lord, we bring before you the missionaries that we support. Lord, we especially think of uh, Robin, Robin Green at Bingham Academy in Ethiopia. And Lord, we think of Millard and Joyce uh, Sleeman, who are still confined, Lord, here in Australia due to the COVID-19 virus. Lord, we thank you for them. Lord, we thank you for their faithful service. And we ask that you would be with them. Lord, that they would have a, uh, an understanding and a sense of your closeness. Lord, we think of our sick, those that are unwell. Lord, we just ask that uh, your hand of healing would be upon them. Lord, that they would not lose hope, but instead that they would know that you are Lord. Lord, we think of our elderly and, and those that may be lonely, Lord, and still unable to, to come out, Lord, whether it be because of fears of COVID or for other reasons, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you would be with them. Lord, that they would know your presence and that they would know the warmth of your closeness. Lord, we do thank you for the many ministries that we have um, and our ministry leaders and the helpers. And Lord, we pray for every aspect um, of this church and the different ministries that we have. And just ask, Lord, that, that our bottom line, our, our overall purpose, Lord, would always be to bring glory and honour to you and to you alone. Lord, we thank you for the teachers and the kids uh, in each of the schools here in Parks. Lord, we especially think of the kids who are having their HSC tests, which are looming very near into the future, Lord. Such a strange year, a difficult year for them, Lord, especially. Uh, and Lord, we just ask that you would give them a peace of mind, that they would know, Lord, the things that they have learnt, that they, they would be able to recall those, and Lord, that they would be no panic or, or the stress would be um, reduced dramatically, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you would be with them. Lord, we think of the leaders of our country, especially our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, our State Leader, Jack Gladys uh, Berejiklian, our local member, uh, Mark Colton and Philip Donato, and that you would give them wisdom, Lord, as they lead, that you would give them direction and that they would listen to you, Lord, and that they would do what you have called for them to do. Lord, we just think of the issue of COVID around our world. Lord, it is such a, an issue, such a problem, Lord, and we just ask that you would step in. Lord, there are many people that are um, falling sick with this virus, Lord, many people who are dying. And Lord, we ask that, uh, yeah, that you would intervene. But more so, Lord, we ask that somehow through this that you would be more glorified, that people would turn to you. Lord, that your people would stand up and be counted. Lord, we just ask that you would be in this situation right around this world. Lord, please use us here in parks. Lord, use us for the extension of your kingdom and for the furtherance of your glory and your glory alone. Lord, we ask this in the beautiful name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. So now we're going to go into our sermon. So if you've got your Bibles there or your handouts there, make sure you have them. Probably your Bibles would be the better option because there are a, quite a few verses that we're going to have a look at, um, which you might want to flick to. But otherwise, in the handouts that have either been uh, ha handed out to you here or I've emailed um, to our congregation as well, you will find a list of all the Bible verses on the back. So if you're wanting to check those, if we go a little bit too quickly, um, then feel free to have a look at those later. But make sure you have your Bible ready and rearing. Faith is needed all the way. Faith to toil and faith to pray. Faith to learn and faith to teach. Faith to practice. Faith to preach. Faith to start each day anew. Faith to do our duty too. Faith to help the weak along. Faith to bear in patience wrong. Faith to smile through those sad within. Faith to conquer 
every sin. Faith to ask him for his care while the we earthly trials bear. Faith to smother every sigh. Faith to live and faith to die. Let's pray. Lord, I just ask that uh, you would speak through me. You would give me the words to speak, Lord, and each of us, myself included, the ears to hear. We just ask that your Holy Spirit would touch each of us, would challenge us, Lord, or encourage us in different areas of our lives. And we ask this, Lord, in Jesus' beautiful name. Amen. So I'm wanting to welcome everyone to the last part of our series, Fight the Good Fight. In fact, it, it feels remiss of me not to say, I'm Pastor Matt Kennedy from the Parks Baptist Church. But <laughs> I think you already know that. <laughs> So yeah, the last part of our series, Fight the Good Fight, based on the book of 1 Timothy, this sermon I've entitled the same as the actual series itself, so Fight the Good Fight. This is again a massive passage, it's huge, and I have no doubt that we could spend from now until Christmas if we wanted to, working through it. The areas that this passage in the second half of 1 Timothy 6 cover is truly mind-boggling. Um, so with this in mind, let me encourage you, take your Bibles out and at home, read through this, have a look at it and really look at it and be challenged by what's there, investigate further with what's there because I can only focus on a small part of what the passage is as we dig into just the first two verses uh, where we are going to get our sermon from. In this passage, we're going to be taking a brief look at what Paul firstly calls for his readers to steer clear from. And then we're going to work our way through the different things that Paul has called for us to pursue. I forgot about my clicker. 1 Timothy 6.11 But as for you, O man of God, these things pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. So in this verse, it starts off by warning Timothy off a number of things. We find in this area the issue of temptation uh, in the preceding verses, actually. The first is to avoid false teaching, as we see Paul warn uh, in 1 Timothy 6, 3 and 4. If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with the sound words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and then the teaching that accords with godliness, he is puffed up with conceit and understands nothing. Pretty solid words there, isn't it? Paul also warns Timothy off the desire to acquire riches and possessions, to desire money, because as Paul says in 1 Timothy 6, 9 and 10, but those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered for away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. Now, we must not miss the language that's being used here. Um, it wasn't enough for Timothy to avoid or to take a wide berth around these things. Paul wasn't using language that said that he should be careful about such things, was he? He wasn't saying, uh, Timothy, you really should be not involving yourself in these things. Paul was uh, advocate. what he was advocating for here was that Timothy was to flee from such things. Do you see the language? That is to turn around and to run in the opposite direction from such things. The language Paul uses here it reminds me of what, who can throw out something, what's it remind you of? There's a fantastic story in the Bible where we see similar language. Anyone? Joseph, yes, absolutely. So Joseph, this is what Joseph did when Potiphar's wife tried to seduce him. Let's check it out. So we see that in Genesis 39, 11 and 12. But one day when he went into the house to do his work and none of the men of the house was there in the house, she caught him by his garment saying, lie with me. But he left his garment in her hands and he fled and got out of the house. Great advice. You'll note here, he didn't just say, no, 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 I couldn't do that. He didn't just slowly turn around and, and walk, you know, majestically out of the house. He hightailed it out of there. 
He turned and he ran. He fled from that situation where sin was crouching at the door. And this is what Paul was saying to Timothy. But as for you, O man of God, which, by the way, is quite an amazing, flattering thing to say, flee these things. Do whatever you can to exit left from these things. Don't hang about thinking that you'll not fall for their allure. Turn tail and run. Run like the wind away from them. So this is the first thing that I'm wanting for us to remember. That is for the man, woman and child of God, flee from sin. Flee from sin. Paul then goes on further in this verse to explain what Timothy should pursue instead. 1 Timothy 6.11 But as for you, O man of God, flee these things. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, gentleness. Let's work our way through these and uh, I'll try and put um, a helpful illustration and a practical application up for each one as well. In fact, let's first look at the word, hey, uh, the word pursue so we can understand the extent of what God is calling for us to do here. Pursue is to follow someone or something, usually to try and catch him or her or it. Um, or if you pursue a plan or an activity or a situation, you try to do it or achieve it, usually over a long period of time. Paul is telling Timothy to chase these thing, things down with eagerness, to, to be intentional in his pursuit. Uh, we also know that this pursuit is not a flash-in-the-pan kind of thing. Uh, it's, it's not a flash-in-the-pan type of scenario, but it is a lifelong pursuit. Something that takes time and patience and persistence. Uh, with this in mind, let's check out what Timothy was to pursue. So Paul starts off the list first encouraging Timothy to pursue righteousness. The word righteousness originates from the root word uh, that means straightness. Um, according to Nelson's Bible Dictionary, they describe it as referring to a state that conforms to an authoritative standard. Righteousness is a moral concept. God's character is the definition and the source of all righteousness. Therefore, the righteousness of human beings is defined in terms of the righteousness of God. The word righteousness in the New Testament, it comes from the Greek word uh, dikaios, um, which I've got that wrong, I know, but, uh, but it means observing divine law or upright. When I say wrong, I didn't pronounce it right. That was, that was all there. Uh, faultless, innocent and guiltless. Based on this moral concept, it could, like it, is it could look like it's talking about people, how they live their lives uh, in the right way. You might say the right way or the straight path is dictated by the one through whom righteous, righteousness uh, finds its definition and its source, that being God. Righteousness is not something that can be achieved by us through our works, it is faith-based. Walter Henry Medhurst, an English Congregationalist missionary to China said, how can a man trust his own righteousness? It's like seeking shelter under one's own shadow. We may stoop to the very ground and the lower we bend, we still find that our shadow is beneath us. But if man flees to the shadow of a great rock or a wide spreading tree, he will find abundant shelter from the rays of the noonday sun. So human merits are unavailing and Christ alone is able to save to the utmost those who come unto God by him. Our righteousness is like rubbish and refuse to God. But the perfect righteousness of Jesus, now that's another thing. It is our faith and our hope and our trust in Jesus that is key to everything. While our own righteousness is insufficient, when we accept Jesus into our lives, he then covers us with his perfect righteousness. It is this righteousness, his righteousness, that transforms our inward state which is then reflected in our outward experience. We will become, uh, we will, because of our righteousness in Christ, 
turn away from our old sinful ways and desires and instead pursue the righteousness of Christ, marrying off, so to speak, our inward righteousness um, in and through Christ with our outward works. So what should I be doing then? What's something practical that I can sink my teeth into? Well, it'd be simply this. Pursue God. Pursue God. Understand that Jesus is the centre of absolutely everything, not you. Jesus doesn't revolve around you. You revolve around Jesus. You don't lead your life and call for Jesus to follow you. You humble yourself, wait, and carefully follow Jesus. He leads you, not the other way around. The most important thing in your life is your relationship with our Lord. Your relationship with our Lord. Our righteousness comes only from Jesus. We have already been made righteous in him. And that is really cool. That is really cool. Remember this. Never forget it. Pursue righteousness. Pursue Christ. Examine yourself and your motives, your priorities and your actions. Are they consistent with the close relationship that you should have with God? Um, 2 Timothy 2.22 says, Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, love and peace, along with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Do you pursue righteousness? Next one, pursue godliness. We've seen Paul encourage the pursuit of godliness uh, all throughout this letter in Timothy. I'm hoping that you've seen this. Um, I have a couple of mates who enjoy having a go at a triathlon uh, triathlon competitions. And the triathlon, for those that are not sure, it requires a great amount of endurance. Depending on the level of the event, you need to be able to swim a certain distance, you need to be able to ride a bike a certain distance, and finally you need to be able to run a certain distance. It is a tough gig. It is hard on your body, it's hard on your mind, uh, and it stretches you out to the very best or to the limits of your abilities. But here's the thing. The guys and girls that do this, that love this type of thing, which I think is crazy, didn't just decide one day to get up off the couch and think to themselves, I'm going to do a triathlon today. Macca might be able to do that, but the rest of the world probably couldn't. These guys, they spent time preparing themselves uh, they spend time swimming and riding and running. Uh, they don't just give it a few days practice, do they? Unless they want to die. They spend months working their bodies so that it is ready and hopefully doesn't break down on the big day. And everyone kind of like understands this. If you want to build your body's strength and endurance, you prepare. You prepare for that. Why do we need, why do we not see the same is required in the realm of the spiritual? And that's why Paul says in 1 Timothy 4 8, when it comes through, there we are. And the Apostle Paul says, For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. When pursuing godliness, the best description that I can come up with is for us to display in our lives that which has been described as the fruits of the Spirit, which we would all be um, uh, aware of. Uh, Galatians 5, to 23. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things... There is no law. If we, have to, if we have to have these things in our lives, if, if we were to have these things in our lives, we would be, be becoming more Christ-like in our Christian walk every day. And therefore, we would be pursuing godliness. The next thing that uh, Paul encourages Timothy to pursue is for him to pursue faith. Probably the best biblical definition that I could come up with regarding faith comes from Hebrews 11, 
uh, verse 1, um, which says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. We see a fantastic example of faith in Genesis 15, where Abraham has uh, dealings with the created God. Uh, God has called for Abraham to trust in him. And if he did so, Abraham would have many possessions uh, and the promised land and many descendants. So he was going to sorry, get the possession of the promised land and many descendants. Uh, Genesis 15, 6 tells us that Abraham believed the Lord and he counted and he counted it to him as righteousness. Abraham had faith that God would do uh, what he had said that he would do. Uh, Paul is, in referencing this point, he says in uh, Romans 4, 20 to 21, uh, no one belief made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore, faith means that we are to put our trust in God with the confidence that he will fulfil his promises. It's a bit like when a uh, young girl, unaccustomed to travelling, uh, was taking a train ride through the country and it happened that in the course of the day, her train was obliged to cross uh, two branches of a river and several very wide streams. And the water scene in advance always awakened doubts and fears in the child. She did not understand how it could safely be crossed. Um, and as she drew near the river, however, a bridge would appear uh, and furnished a way over. Uh, two or three times the experience was repeated and finally the child leaned back and with a long breath of relief and confidence said, somebody has put bridges for us all the way. She said, in trusting content. And that is life. We fear so many evils, so many troubles, so many things look dark ahead for us, so many difficulties that seem insurmountable as they loom before us. But as we advance, we find that there is a way through. There is a way through. God has built the bridges all the way. Isn't that cool? When pursuing faith, we're called to put our trust in God with a confidence that he will fulfil his promises. The next thing we're called to do is to pursue love. Now, this is a big one. This is a big one. Jesus gave his followers what he described as a new command in John 13, 34, where he commands, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another just as I have loved you. You are also to love, you are to love one another. This is the mark of a true Christian, you might say. Someone who loves others, someone who, who treats others in love. Many people confuse uh, real love with a feeling. But in the words of uh, the, the late Keith Green, um, a song that he has, love is not a feeling, it's an act of your will. Newspaper columnist and minister George Crane, he tells a story of a wife who came into his office full of hatred toward her husband. I do not only want to get rid of him, I want to get even before I divorce him. I want to hurt him as much as he has me. Dr Crane suggested an ingenious plan. Go home, he said to her, and act as if you really love your husband. Tell him how much he means to you. Praise him for every decent trait that he has. Go out of your way to be kind. Be considerate and generous as possible. Spare no effort to please him, to enjoy him. Make him believe you love him. After you've convinced him of your undying love, that you cannot live without him, then drop the bomb. Tell him that you're getting a divorce. That will really hurt him. With revenge in her eyes, she smiled and she exclaimed, Beautiful. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Will he be ever surprised? <laughs> and she did it with enthusiasm, acting as if 
for two months she showed love, kindness, listening, giving, reinforcing, sharing. When she didn't return, Dr Crane called, are you ready now to go through with the divorce? Divorce? She exclaimed, never. I discovered I really do love him. This lady's actions had a huge impact on her feelings for someone that she apparently hated. Her actions of love and kindness, her actions of love and kindness, had had an impact on her own feelings and changed how she saw the other person. Jesus goes even further, or reinforces this, by commanding in Matthew 5, 43 to 44, you have heard it was said, love your neighbour and hate your enemy, but I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Friends, pursue love. Ask yourself in any given situation or conversation, am I acting or speaking in love? It's not easy. It'll take time to get yourself in that habit. Am I acting or speaking in love? Does the tone of my voice project a loving attitude? Or is it abrupt and sarcastic and hostile and angry? If it is, take a pause. Make a change. Are our homes filled with the love of God that comes through us? If not... You be, not your partner, you be the one who brings in God's love. You be the one who brings in God's love. Is our church a place filled with sacrificial love of God? If not, you bring it in. Bring it in. It is each and every one of our responsibility that it is. Next, Paul calls on Timothy to pursue steadfastness, that is to hold firm to the truth of the gospel, hold firm to Jesus, to be unwavering in our belief, faith and action, to stand strong, uh, to see it out until the end, to refuse to give up even when those around you are falling away like flies. William Carey, the father of uh, modern missions, wanted to translate the Bible into as many Indian languages as possible. And he established a, a large print shop uh, in uh, a town where the translation work was done. Carey spent hours and hours each day uh, translating scripture, often while his wife, who was uh, insane, um, ranted and raved in the room next door. How difficult would this have been? The one night his print shop where the Bibles were being printed burnt to the ground, burnt to the ground. Yet Carey persevered and went forward and accomplished his goal. The secret of Carey's success is found in his steadfast determination. He once wrote, uh, there are grave difficulties on every hand and more are looming ahead. Therefore, we must go forward. It's the same for us as Christians. We too must continue to move forward in steadfastness, no matter what is looming ahead. Christ did not quit when he saw the brutality of the cross. We thank you for that, Lord. And the enormity of the task that lay ahead of him. Neither should we as Christians give in on what God has called for us to do. Last thing that I want, uh, that Paul calls on Timothy to do is to pursue gentleness. Now, gentleness is defined by the dictionary as the quality of being kind, tender or mild-mannered. It's not an easy trait. Uh, we often think that this might be an area that mums, for instance, excel at. But not everyone has a gentle mum. A police recruit was asked during his final exam what would you do if you had to arrest your own mother? His response was call for backup. <laughs> Often we can confuse gentleness with weakness. 
But it's not true at all. The person who is truly gentle is also someone who is strong. But their strength, they, they use their strength with complete control. Not letting their emotion or passion rule how they respond. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 15.1, A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. How true is that? How true is that? We are to treat others, those who are weak, defenceless and vulnerable with care, thoughtfulness and protection. We're not to be harsh in our quest to right or to fix a situation. A bit like a guy whose kids won four free goldfish at a school carnival. They came in a plastic Ziploc bag which meant that they... Um, had to go out now and find a fish tank and pay all that money with for the fish tank and all the accessories and they were worth a small fortune to buy for these four free goldfish. But he came across a medium-sized tank complete with gravel and filter for a mere five bucks. Sold. Of course it was nasty and it was dirty but the savings made, the, the number of hours that it took to clean it up a breeze because he was saving so much money. Those four new goldfish, they look great in their new home, at least for the first day. But by Sunday, one had died. Too bad. But three remained. Monday morning revealed a second casualty and by Monday night, a third god, goldfish had gone belly up. Now, greatly concerned, the dad called in an expert, a member of his church who had a very large tank and many fish. It didn't take him long to discover the problem. The dad had washed the tank with soap, apparently an absolute no-no. His uninformed efforts had destroyed the very lives that he was trying to protect. Sometimes in our zeal to clean up our own lives or the lives of others, we unf- unfortunately, we use killer soaps. We condemn people. We criticise them. Nagging, fits of temper. We think we're doing right. But our harsh, self-righteous treatment is more than they can bear. We lose gentleness for the sake of getting things done. We crush others for our own progress, satisfaction, retaliation or warped sense of justice. But as Christians, we have been called to be different, haven't we? We've been called to be different to the world and to actually do the opposite. To, as Paul instructs Timothy here, to pursue gentleness. Is this you? How do you respond to difficult people or difficult situations? Do you pursue gentleness? So Paul starts by explaining the things that we should be fleeing from and then he identifies the things that we should pursue. Now Paul speaks on that which we as Christians should fight for. 1 Timothy 6.12 Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. This is, this is a huge verse that I considered running just by itself. It is that big. So there are things there that I am going to overlook. So let me please encourage you. Go back to this passage. Read through it. Read through it. You will not regret it. Friends, we must never forget that we are in the midst of a real battle. We're not in the edges looking in. This is not a battle that involves other people, or it's not a battle that involves other people, but not you, you might say. If you're a follower of Jesus, a confessed Christian, then you're in the thick of it. Which is why why Paul calls Timothy to arms here, where he says to him, fight the good fight of the faith. The world is heading in one direction and we as believers are well and truly heading against the flow. If you find you're not, 
re-examine where you're going. The literal Greek translation of the phrase fight the good fight is agonise the good agony. It's a tough, hard battle. Anyone that told you when you became a Christian that life was going to get easy? I can't tell you what to do because we're recording. But let them know that they're not telling you the truth because it is a hard, hard life. But we've got Jesus. We have Jesus on our side. We have God on our side. It's a tough battle. It's going to be hard and we each will need to be determined to have having a soldier's mindset, you might say, to push through those tough and sometimes painful times. We're to support one another, rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to get us through. We're to not just hold up the truth of the gospel, but we're to live it. Or as Paul's last instruction to Timothy reads, we are to take hold of eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. The man or woman of God must take hold and seize eternal life and live it out daily. Eternal life for the believer starts in the now and it flows into the eternity. Pray Read your scriptures, serve one another in love and gentleness, stand steadfast in your belief and bring all glory and honour to God the Father through his beautiful Son, Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I just thank you for your word. Lord, I just ask that you would help us to seek the things that we've spoken or we've looked at today. Lord, that you would help us to flee from those things which are evil and to look after or to look towards those things um, that you have called for us to, to take hold of, Lord. Lord, I just ask that for each of us that we would take hold of the eternal life to which we have been called. Lord, that we would share that with others. And if there are those that don't know you, Lord, our, our prayer is that they would come to a saving knowledge of you. Lord, that they would come to, to want and to know more about this Jesus, this, this man who came and changed the world and everyone in it. Lord, I just ask that uh, for each person, Lord, whether they're a believer or not a believer, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would impact them in some way. Lord, we just thank you for, as we said, your word. And I just ask, Lord, that you would uh, bless and, and remind us throughout the weeks to fight the good fight. Lord, I just ask this in Jesus' beautiful name. Amen. So we'll now go and have our final worship item, which is uh, King of Kings. So uh, please uh, listen and enjoy um, as we worship God through this item. Thank you. Without light, till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets. To a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. to 
the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this was our salvation Jesus for our sake you died from their tombs and the angels stood in awe for the souls of all who'd come to the Father are restored the church was Christ was born then the Spirit lit the flame now this gospel truth of all shall not kneel, shall not faint by his blood and in his name in his freedom for the love of Jesus Christ who has resurrected me. Thank you very much for uh, joining with us today. It's great to be able to see all of your smiling faces. Uh, thank you also for joining with us online. Uh, great to have you with us. Uh, let me please close with a benediction. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, please uh, feel free to sit and chat, um, but slowly make your way uh, out if you've got kids. Just keep on keep in mind the social distancing side of stuff as well. Thank you so much.